Hi there everyone, welcome back to GameMaker Casts. In today's video, we will be looking at an advanced and flexible targeting system. This one is reusable, filterable, and super clean for managing proximity-based logic like AI, combat, or even visual effects. Let's say you want an object to detect nearby enemies, but not just any enemies. You might want only those that have low hit points, or maybe that ones that are deemed as targetable. We are going to solve this by using a utility called Targeting Helper. This script can be downloaded from the link in the description below and is free to use in your own projects. Let's take a look at the main functions of this script. We have get in radius, which will return an array of all instances within a specified radius. We also have a get nearest function, which will return the nearest instance within a radius. However, the real power comes from the filter function. The idea is simple. We can find all the instances within a certain radius using the collision circle list function. Then, we apply one or more filters to that list which will return the instances that match our criteria. Let's take a look at how we can use this in practice. Let's say we have a player objects and multiple enemies in the room. We want to find all enemies within a certain radius of the player, which is fairly easy and straightforward. First off, let's create a new variable called target helper. This will let us access the functions within the target helper class. Now, in our step event, I want to find all the enemies within a radius of 128 pixels. Let's first create a variable called instances to hold the results. Next, we will call our new helper, and the function we want to use is getInRadius. We will pass in the player's x and y coordinates, the object we want to find, and the radius we want to search. Now for some visual feedback, for all of the instances we found, let's change their image blend to red. Now when we run the game, any enemies within the radius of the player will be highlighted in red. This is a great start, but what if we want to filter these enemies further? Let's say we only wanted to find enemies that have hit points that are less or equal to 5. Back in our code, we can add a function to the function call. This can either be a function by itself or an anonymous function. This function will take an instance as a parameter and return true if the instance's hit points are less than 5. Now when we run the game, only enemies with hit points less than 5 will be highlighted in red. This is a great way to filter out unwanted instances and focus on the ones that matter. Let's take this a step further and add another filter. We will leave in the filter for the hit points, but we will also add a filter for targetable instances. Now when we run the game, only enemies that have hit points less than 5 and are targetable will be highlighted in red. We can add as many filters as we want. We just need to ensure the variables we are checking exist on the instances we are filtering. This makes the targeting system very flexible and reusable. We can also use the getNearest function to find the nearest instance within a radius. This function also accepts a filter function, so we are able to swap the function calls easily. And that is actually all you need to start filtering instances in your game. There is a lot more you can do with this system, and it's in the early stages of development. Let's take a look behind the scenes at how this actually works, though. The functions get in radius and get nearest are both using the collision circle list function to find all instances within a certain radius. The magic happens in the filter functions themselves. The filter function can either be a single function or an array of functions. These filters are checked through a should include function, which will return true if the instance passes all the filters. This function, however, first will check to see if the filters variable is defined, meaning you passed a filter into the function. Next, for each of the filters, we will check to see if that filter is actually a callable function. It then runs the function and passes in the instance that it found. If this function returns false, then the entire filter will return false. However, if all the filter returns true, then the instance will be included in the results. It is nice that you can keep your filters modular and reusable. This means you can extract your filters into their own functions and use them across multiple calls to the targeting helper. So, to wrap everything up, this targeting system is super powerful and is just the beginning. There are a lot of other features to add, such as line of sight checks, but that will come later. This system is open source and free to use in your own projects. You can even make changes to the repository and submit a pull request if you want to contribute. The system packs a punch with clean logic and reusable code. So with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Don't forget to check out my Patreon page for more content and support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.
a special shout out to the following users in no particular order. Game Maker Community, Sean, Micah, Matthew, Thomas, Victor, Sapikai, Review the Future. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon and YouTube. Your generosity means the world to me and helps me continue creating tutorials, tools, and content for the community.